Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome to our introduction to ITOT video series. With me is Christian. Hi Jeremy, glad to be back here with you. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about, we're, we're in the chapter of, of operational technology and we're going to talk about, I think, one of the most important aspects of OT and this is the automation pyramid. Yeah, exactly. And I heard a lot recently about the automation pyramid since this is basically the concept that everybody should probably have heard of and had a look into it, especially in the world of OT. But Jeremy, maybe you can explain us a little bit further. What is the automation pyramid for those who don't know? Yeah, the OT automation pyramid is a central framework for the world, world of OT. It started in the middle of the 90s with the ISA 88 model, which was a model to, to describe a production process from organizational perspective and from a process perspective. It was, at the beginning, was just tailored to batch production, so like pharmaceutical production. And then there came the ISA 99 model, uh, ISA 95 model, sorry. Interestingly, even though it says ISA 88, it was developed in 1995 and the ISA, ISA 95 model was, okay, there is no date here. It, it's interesting. So the ISA 95 model, this is what's still, still in use today and also used around the entire globe. It's a model to describe factories and it starts with Let's take a look at the at the bottom level. At the bottom, you always have the sensors, and then you have as the next level, you have like the PLCs. We will later go into detail what PLCs are, but for now, these are like small computing units that take data from the sensors and then do like very small controlling of the machines. And then you have a level above it, or is like the monitoring and supervision system, like a SCADA system that looks at multiple PLCs and tries to ensure that they can communicate with each other. So if you have a process that spans, I don't know, for 50, 100 meters, you typically have every five meters or so a PLC with, with all the sensors connected. And then you have a scatter system for the entire line. Then we have on level three, we have the manufacturing operations and management, the MES tool. The MES thinks about or, or, or tracks stuff like orders. So it gets information from the ERP, like level four, what should be produced and then splits it up into multiple process steps. Okay, we want to have 1000 liters of this, this liquid. Uh, so we need to first put it into this machine and it goes, needs to go through this process and we need this and this materials delivered at this time frame. That's the production planning part. We will uh, later, later go, go, go through all of that. And these are the, 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 the four levels, how everything is set up. So how you can think about from the, from the top side, from the ERP system, we have under it, we have the MES system, then we have a SCADA system, which mostly only exists in process industry. Uh, so in CNC machines, CNC machining, you typically don't have a SCADA system. And then you have PLCs and sensors. But why is the ERP system and the uh, automation pyramid uh, when it's, I mean, we are talking about the concept of OT here. Isn't an ERP system an IT system as well? Yeah. So somewhere between MES and ERP, PLM, we also see it here. It, it's, there is a blurred line between it. So typically everything like the sensors, PLCs and the SCADA system, they don't work over normal Ethernet. They work via so-called field buses. And everything above it is then working via, via normal Ethernet. And somewhere between MES, ERP there, suddenly you'd start to talk more about typical, typical IT terms. It's not a defined line. Also, if you take a look at various frameworks, everyone puts, puts these level four, level three, either into OT or into IT. It's kind of a... How you want to think? Okay, I understand. And I mean, in this picture that you can also find under learn.umh.app for those who only listen to us, and the picture that uh, we show the pyramid with, 
there's also the concept of time frames. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on on those different time frames of each layer. Yeah. So it is basically the the lower the level is, it is the more real time it gets. So the ERP system on the very top, it only thinks about okay, I have this orders, and I need in general, I need this material. So let's think about the logistics of of everything. Let's ensure that the materials are there but doesn't go any more real time. It's updated, could be only updated like once per day. On the other side, on the bottom, if you control a production process, it's about micro and milliseconds. And so you have like a different different steps. So the PLC talks to the sensors in milliseconds and microseconds, but the SCADA system only gives input in, 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 in second, uh, second intervals. And then the communication between MES and SCADA is typically, okay, now start this order or don't start it. So there are various uh, different time ranges here. Also, one, one, one other element that's in the uh, i 5 model, this is like, it's like a huge standard. There's like one way of showing it. Another one is how you can structure the, the factory. We have it here on, on, the, on the top. So um, how, how to think about the production process, not only about like MES, ERP, et cetera, but also about, okay, how does, how does a PLC, how does it all belong together? And there you typically talk about an enterprise, which like one company, company can have multiple sites. So locations like factory plants, a factory plants can have multiple areas. For example, building A, hall, hall three, whatever, then you can have multiple production production lines and now then it the isa 88 only knows like the process cell the batch production and the isa 95 you there suddenly starts to split up okay do i have now continuous production batch production or discrete there you have typically you now have like the element of production line then you have the equipment and then you have the the plc this is also like one way of structuring it there, there are a lot of different elements also to the to the automation pyramid and the i 5 model. But I think we covered here now the, the basic ideas. It's, it even goes into way more details. But this is, this, these are at least the parts that, are, that can be found. It doesn't, doesn't matter where, whether you are somewhere in Australia, in Germany, or in the US. It's very likely that the factory will be built like this and that the people are also thinking like this. Okay. And... Just to, to finish it up, the kind of like the theory um, on the top layer, so ERP, MES, it's all about business planning and logic. So the functions is more like, yeah, as I said, uh, planning and management, while on the bottom level with, uh, level with the sensors and PLCs, it's more about then getting data out of the production process and starting to do something with the data, right? Yeah. Perfect. And then... What are the challenges with automation pyramid today? Because we, I mean, we are talking still a lot about the pyramid and I think it's still valid, but more and more from, especially from the US, the concept of unified namespace is coming in. And how do you kind of like compare both theories with, with each other? And is, for example, the unified namespace deleting the concept of the pyramid in the in the future what do you think yeah so there will be definitely a small opinion piece in here in general what you can say is that the automation pyramid really ensures that the production keeps going because there are also clear responsibilities one layer or also important one layer can only talk with the next one so it really ensures that the production keeps running but disadvantages are the data is siloed. So this is like a huge point. And this is like also one of the key challenges in getting data from, from the production lines today, because only the data is exchanged that is actually needed. And the SCADA system, for example, doesn't need all the values that the PLC has. So even though you have a production line and the IT connected to the IT system is somewhere starts here at the MES level. So theoretically, you have all the data, you have all the vibration, but it's not available because there are elements in between. And you also don't want to change those elements to pass the data through because they are not designed to handle this type of data. So currently, and this is like one of the problems, everything is in, in silos. 
And this is where the concept of unified namespace com comes in. Uh, we will later we'll later talk about it in the chapter of IIoT. How can we combine everything? Where it basically says, oh, okay, what about that we send, we do not only talk with a level above, but that we talk to a central point, like a, for example, a message broker, so that we can exchange information even across levels. And my personal opinion is that we should leave the automation pyramid as it is. But on the right side, basically here, put in like a unified namespace so the data does not only flow into the, the across the levels, but also to the right side into a, cent into a central message broker, for example. So that there you have access to all the data because when you work with the data, you don't need to ensure that the production keeps, you're not controlling things. So there you can just have send all the data into it and then you can do like data analytics, OE and other use cases that you have in industry 4.0 and industrial IoT. So to summarize, basically your, your idea is to still use the pyramid since it's very good to structure each level, but um, to gain the advantage of the, let's say, unified namespace and the world of, uh, that comes with that, uh, that we are discussing in a, on a later stage. It's kind of like to, to make the connections a little bit different so that we, we as a production company profit from basically both concepts and use it in a most, let's say, perfect, perfect way. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Then I would say, let's have a look at, at each layer in the uh, upcoming episodes. And I'm really looking forward to dive with you into the, the concepts here. Until then, for the listeners, uh, please let us know if you have any, any questions, if you see it maybe differently with the concept of unified namespace. Have you heard of it? What do you think? Um, let us know in the comments or in the Discord channel that is currently growing each day. And um, yeah, please join. Please join us there. It's a vibrant community. And um, yeah, um, I would say I see you next week. Thank you for listening.